How did you get into the porn industry? Um, well, I was an exotic dancer at 19. I started dancing at 19. Off and on, I danced in Vegas and L.A. Um, I was always kind of a nude model. I did, like, car magazines and tattoo stuff. And then I started uh, doing Playboy TV. Uh, I did, like, their money talk show. And I did the Playboy morning show, like, literally 15 times in, like, a six-month period. Mm -hmm. And then they asked me eventually if I would uh, work on their new, like, camming website, Mm -hmm. uh, which was Playboy Live. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I started camming for Playboy Live. And back then, like, Playboy, I don't know how it changed now, but you couldn't be, well, you could only be naked. You couldn't show pink. Like, Mm -hmm. you couldn't, like, really show your vagina. You couldn't spread. You couldn't use toys. So it was really about, like, teasing and, like, talking and, like, really kind of just playing and, you know, either being yourself or playing characters where you really there's so much you could do like there was really not restrictions except for not being naked which was hard for like maybe a lot of people like now if you told like the average like porn star it's like okay you can webcam but you can't do anything sexual essentially oh when I used to shoot for Playboy (laughs) Plus and before when I used to shoot girls that would like uh, sometimes shoot porn like I shot like Jenna Sativa Mm -hmm. for them a couple other girls uh, Lana Rhodes and uh, yeah it was funny because it was like I was like stop touching your vagina I'm yes. like, don't touch your vagina, no pink. And they'd be like, oh, fuck, I forgot. You would get like blips that would pop up on your screen being like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious too because like most of the girls that I shot for Playboy Plus were like more nude models. Yeah. And when I shot for them, um, Mind Geek was still running the website. So they wanted, like, they were kind of pushing for a little bit more open leg. The website's yeah, yeah. Con- totally gone backwards <laughs> now. Like 25% open leg. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, it was a casual open leg. Yeah. And, um, and some girls didn't want to do that. So with some girls, yeah. with most girls, I was playing like what I felt was like, hot, you know, like find the vagina. Yeah. Cause I would like have to try to get them to like do some, and we would always talk about it before the scene. I'd yes. be like, this is what they would like. Um, are you, what are you comfortable with? And I would literally like send them photos of different open leg shots because some girls were okay with showing like the clit yeah but they didn't want to show the undercarriage some mm-hmm. girls were okay showing the undercarriage but they wouldn't show the butthole like I literally every girl like three quarters of the vagina yes. like there, there was very specific stuff which was fine yeah and i would try to respect that but sometimes like even when they would agree with it they would still not really want yeah. to show it to me so i'd have to like try to be like okay give me a little more like but it's a trip right a little bit more and they'd kind of like but i didn't want to like push them and it was like this weird like yeah. It was really stressful, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, so, you really had to, like, kind of get creative. Yeah. And, I mean, I feel like I, I like that that's how I started because it kind of taught me, like, how to do more mm-hmm. than just be, like, uber sexual. Yeah. And, like, you know, you really learned how to, like, talk to people and engage and how mm-hmm. to talk to fans. And, like, you know, I would be silly and I would talk about, like, movies and stuff half the time. Yeah. And I would, like, put on outfits and, like, dance around. And it was so funny, too. I remember, like, when I was there and, like, a few months into it, like, sometimes you'd do, like, girl-girl shows, but they weren't girl-girl shows. Yes. Yeah, I've shot girl-girl for them that wasn't girl-girl. That's girl. not girl-girl. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> even back then, it was funny to me. And, like, some girls were so shy and it's, like, you didn't, you know, you didn't really want to to touch them so it was really just like two cute girls sitting next to each other <laughs> the whole time but it was it was fun I enjoyed it because I feel like it taught me a lot mm-hmm. um, and then and then uh, I did like a bunch of the Playboy TV stuff and I, for- I honestly kind of forgot like how it really just happened but I think I did like my first girl girl ish for Playboy TV it was like kind of a pseudo girl girl mm-hmm. um, and then like dare dorms and like that kind of stuff and then I was like you know I, I always really wanted I was interested and doing it like even before then like the last civilian boyfriend I had I told him like look kind of want to do this he wasn't really a fan I'm like okay well if we break up I'm doing it just letting yeah. you know yeah. and then I literally did and he emailed me like within two months of me being officially in porn being like well I guess you don't lie and I'm like I told you um, <laughs> but yeah so I started doing a little bit of like the the solo and girl girl with like uh, modeling and camming mm-hmm. And then it just kind of transitioned a little bit, uh, and I started doing solos first. I started slow. Once I actually was shooting movies, I started doing solos just for a few months, and then I started doing Girl Girl for a few months. I really wanted to make sure that I was doing what I I wanted to do. smart. And yeah, so I didn't want to regret it, because it was something I was very interested in doing. I was like super sexual and like really open. I've already had like a polyamorous relationship. I've Mm -hmm. had threesomes. I've done anal. Like I did a lot of stuff in my personal life already, so I just wanted 
wanted to make sure that, and you know, well, there wasn't, especially back then too, is where I said there's such a difference now. There wasn't a lot of resources mm-hmm. to really like find more things out about the interest industry. Like I read a few performer books and did like some online research. So like I was just really nervous. So yeah. I was like, all right, we got to take this one step at a time. Now that's another reason why I'm really open about like helping people if I can or like, oh, hey, this is how you anal prep. If you want to know what to have in your girly bag, if you want to know what's kind of expected of you on certain kinds of sets, I think it's really valuable. Like we're our biggest resource in right. the industry. So I think right. it's incredibly valuable to like share your experiences and stories and help, especially if you don't like people having horror stories or people mm-hmm. trashing the industry if they decide to leave. Like then it really is much more of a choice kind mm-hmm. of standard. And I always wanted it to be my choice. I didn't want to like blame porn for destroying my life or like somebody else for taking advantage of me necessarily and granted there's only so much you can do in those kind of situations but I wanted I wanted to feel like it was mine and like you know if I hated it if I loved it it's on me hey guys if you want to support my show then you should think about joining my patreon at my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.